Hi, we're the Rices. We've been married for 12 years. We have six kids from the ages of nine to zero, and we're full of passion to raise a household that serves and honors the Lord. And we want to encourage others to do the same. Hello and welcome back to the Raising Rices podcast. It's been a little while, but my name's Darren. I'm at Lead Your Family on Instagram, and my lovely wife Marissa is here with me as well. And you can find me at Raising Rices. We are so excited to be back, but where did we go and why? Yeah, we've been seriously MIA <laughs> for a little while, and we're so glad for you guys' patience and support and the questions we've had along the way from some of you. But we are getting back into this, and we're super excited. And today, we have such a timely topic, and timely because we just experienced this in our very own lives. Our conversation today surrounds why parenting needs to be your number one ministry above all else. Yeah, it's just so important that in our walk with the Lord— and in our, our personal life, of course, pursuing a relationship with the Lord first. But next after that, most importantly, comes your marriage. Yeah. And then right after that, your next jurisdiction is to disciple your children. And so when we think about those things and then we think about all of the other ministry and business things that we endeavor to do and even feel called to do, it is really important that we keep our priorities kind of in the right order. Now, let's make sure to lay out some groundwork. We're not talking about like mismanagement of time or, you know, being unorganized. And so therefore you're like, well, I can't do this thing because I need to focus on my first jurisdiction. It's about seriously evaluating and looking about all of the aspects that you're doing and does it align with your family vision um, and within your family vision, knowing that that is your main jurisdiction. Yeah. And so you've heard us talk about in prior episodes a lot about your family vision and what the your purpose for your family is and really finding that and enacting that through your worldview and through all of how you manage your calendar even and what you do. And so the last six months yeah. has really been a time of us enacting what we share with you guys and what we share with other people is important to do. And I hope you can see that our heart is hopefully never to be hypocritical. And so when we say that our kids come first after marriage and after God, of course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that we really do want to live that out. This awesome podcast that we just love and we love to inspire and encourage other parents out there is a ministry to us. That's how we view it. And so we want to give you everything that we have that the Lord has been teaching and training us in. But we also know that the Lord is teaching us and training us and we need to respond to that calling in our life. So where have we been? Yeah. So we moved from Oregon to Idaho. We moved in May and the house that we were supposed to move into was not done. <laughs> and so it continued to challenge us just in how to prioritize our time and how to make the best of our time and how to lead our family and parent and just disciple our kids and, and teach them through situations that aren't what you expect and aren't easy. But we have been working hard all summer on our property here and on our house. And it really has been uh, just a time of encouragement and blessing overall, I would say. Yeah, it's been so good. I mean, we've been on an incredible journey. I know we've shared a little bit here on the podcast and definitely um, over on social media and on our blogs, but we bought this property that we are actually sitting in our house right now recording. This is the first time, babe. Yeah. This is the first in the time. House, <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a wonderful library. <laughs> I love it. That's not organized not at all. yet. <laughs> yeah. This is why we don't do video. Yeah. We are only audio. <laughs> but we um, bought this property in 2020. And, uh, or we put an offer on it in 2020. There yeah. was another, you know, everything comes with a story. But there was some hubbaloo about, you know, signing and all the things. However, I we had felt 
way back then a vision, a calling, um, a direction for our family. And so Darren and I went on a crazy like weekend drive all the way through Idaho to pick it. We drove up to this property, by the way. I'm totally telling on myself oh, yeah. here. Okay. We drove up, and there is there was no easement at the time. I mean, there's an easement, but it's like no, somebody's yard. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then there was another realtor. We didn't have a realtor. We were just looking at properties. There was another realtor with another couple there looking at the property, and we pull up, and I just I didn't want to get out of the car. I was so nervous. And so Darren <laughs> Walks up all by himself, looks at the property. So I didn't even lay eyes on this property, but we knew it was the one. It was in the right price. It was in the right location. It was in the right um, frame of farming mentality, right? Like it's a flat field. There isn't a lot of forest. There's water. Yeah, we love forests, but it was the ones we looked at were like, sides of the hill and stuff. Anyways, again, long story. So we bought this property. We still owned our house in Oregon. And um, we just thought, oh, we'd sit on it for a while. We just wait and build when we felt like the time was right. I feel and the Lord in his yeah. goodness <laughs> just makes you wait sometimes and makes you hurry up and make a decision sometimes. And he definitely did. Yeah. You know, um, 2021 came and Darren is a nurse um, currently and was faced with a lot of hard decisions with different mandates and different um, situations at work. So the Lord kind of propelled us during that time to sell our house, to sell. We had five kids at the time. Yeah. Sell our house and move into a trailer. Yeah. With really a, a loose plan that we could probably build a house here. Like... It was buildable property, but we didn't have a construction loan. We didn't have plan. We had plans. Yeah. And we had a bid, but it was kind of a loose bid and there was no loan yet. So it was an adventure. Definitely. But the Lord and his goodness just gives you the strength and equips you for that. And, you know, you don't really realize it, but in each season that you're in, you're being equipped for the next thing that you're going to face. And this really just has been a story of that. Yeah. And it's a story of hurry up and trust the Lord. And it's a story of be patient and wait when all of a sudden you live in your trailer for like 18 months. Then you still move to Idaho in like the rainiest thunderstorm spring (laughs) that they've had here in years. And you're still living in your trailer. A 33-foot trailer. Yeah, 33. Let's make sure that we paint the This isn't like a 46-foot fifth wheel or anything. This is a (laughs) 32-foot bumper toe. And it was pulled on the side of the house with a yard that is essentially a mud pit because it's been under construction for the last year and a half. So it was an adventure of a spring. Yeah. And, you know, throw in we had a baby, too, in the midst of all that. So it was really, when we moved here, it was really a time to like focus in on um, making sure our kids transitioned well. I think that like, you know, you just heard us for the last three years, we've been in transition. We've been in chaos. We've been in small spaces. But when we moved here, we just really felt like we needed to focus in to make sure that their spiritual well-being, physical well-being, emotional well-being, all those things were set on a trajectory of success. Yeah, there's a lot of things that are just challenges. You know, you move away from a lot of your friends. You all of a sudden, you move away from your church family. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of things that aren't things that are easy decisions or easy to kind of work through. But we had this great opportunity this year to really do everything we did as a family together. And it was planting a garden and it's plant like just walking the 10 acres and planning where things go. And I'm learning like flood irrigation and (laughs) chicken raising and everything just like on the fly. And I mean, we've been reading and stuff, but you can only learn so much before you just start doing. Yeah. And if any of this sounds cool to you. It probably sounds panicful to some people, but if you're like, wow, I want to know more about that. We do have a website and an Instagram 
about just our farm. Yeah. Um, it's at Heritage Home Family Farm if you're interested, just so you can kind of see Darren in the middle of the night flooding the field, trying not <laughs> to flood the neighbor's new construction right, house. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's been an adventure for sure. But the cool thing is that it makes me slow down when I'm learning something new and then the kids are learning it alongside. Mm-hmm. And so that's been just a good sanctifying journey and a good learning for me is that it really is everything in life that you do that you are learning is an opportunity to teach and equip your kids and disciple your kids right alongside you and all of it. Yeah. And you know what? That kind of just brings up and reminds us of, and and maybe for you too, seeing people good... Um, good-willed or or trying their best to do God's calling in their lives. People that have chosen something else, uh, a ministry or an opportunity above their children in a time of need. And we've seen that and we just kind of want to make a caution for ourselves against that. And that is why we took the time. And maybe that is a reminder to you too, to kind of take inventory of how your kids are doing, especially in seasons of transition, which we did talk about in an episode, seasons mm-hmm. of transition. Um, maybe with something that seems even mundane, like maybe the mundane life or the just everyday goings is actually creating some kind of need inside your kids that you just need to stop and take inventory of and to literally just wipe the page, wipe your calendar clean and make that be the priority. Yeah, it's been interesting because you realize so quickly that your kids are capable of so much and that it really is an opportunity to teach them and support them and listen to them all through the process. And I think it's really easy, like Marissa was saying, to get distracted with your ministry or what you think you're called to do or even your work or just like the stress of your schedule and think like that misnomer, like, well, if I work really hard now, I'm going to set it up so that in 10 years, I'll have all the time with my kids. But in 10 years, your kids are going to be grown up. Yeah. And the most formative time that you can spend with your kids is when they're young. Like we're already kind of feeling it with our oldest because she's 10 and she's so close to like being a young adult Mm -hmm. that's right around the corner. And so it's just super important to spend that time teaching them, pursuing their heart and really discipling them when they're young. They say that by the age a child by 12, right? Yeah. By a 12 years old that your child has developed their worldview, you know? Right. And that is such a short amount of time when you think about it, especially when if you have that mindset of, well, I'm just going to work hard or I'm just going to, you know, throw everything that I have into this moment when they're young so that, you know, when they're teenagers, I can like do more things with them. While that is awesome and you totally should do lots of things with your teenager, right? don't sacrifice the younger years and in hopes that the older years will be successful or don't create some vision that you want for your family when they're teenagers that you're not laying the groundwork and foundation for when they're young. Yeah. So that's a big story of where we've been really (laughs) is to say that. We took the summer and we really pressed into working on transitioning well. We have a short summer season out here. We didn't move into the house until the beginning of July. Yeah. And we have a short summer season that has come to an end, really. It's solidly fall here in eastern Idaho at 4,800 feet of elevation. And Monday, winter's coming. Yes, yeah. Like, (laughs) winter is coming. And so... It was, it was a season of preparing our property and preparing our family in just the transition that we were in. And so that's why we take a step back from some of the extra things like this podcast that we love and we have such a heart for encouraging others, but we have to 
do what we preach, practice what you preach, yeah. right? And make sure that we are just focusing on the hearts of our kids, on our marriage, and on kind of our, our home jurisdiction first before we're launching out. Because if you are in a, a place personally where you're falling apart, it doesn't set you up well to lead and encourage others. And you know what? This isn't just our idea. Like the Bible talks about this when in Titus, when it's talking about eldership Mm -hmm. and making sure that your home is in order first to be qualified for eldership. It's because, you know, what is what is that expression? Home is where the heart is. I don't right. think that's in the Bible, but <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. It's like everything kind of like pours out from your home, right? For not only the parents but for the kids too. And you can, see, I mean, you can see that if if someone's at like a child um, has a a bad home life, that comes out in their behaviors, in their insecurities, um, in their vision for life. And you know what? The same is for parents. If if Darren comes home from work, even though he works at home, but he, he came yeah. home for work and it was chaos, maybe that would drive him not to want to be at home. And that l- makes us lose our entire vision of family and togetherness and husbands leading. Or maybe if the home is crazy and not um, supported well, the wife just wants to, quote unquote, have some me time away from home. And you know what? That's not biblical either. And that's a whole another can of worms don't mishear me in that I do think it's good for wives to get out with other people and stuff like that but if the heart motivation is I need to get away right that is the issue not I'm going to you know bless others or be a blessing um, or have blessings in return you know what I mean yeah and then I think another thing too that you know really has been a focus of ours as we moved is also finding and connecting with a church family and other believers because that is an important biblical part of our walk with the Lord and leading our families and and being faithful followers of Christ really is that we need to be in community with other believers. And so moving to a brand new place Like we did some (laughs) e-scouting and, uh, you know, some connecting with some believers in the area before we moved, but it really does take a significant amount of time to go to churches, meet with pastors and elders, connect with other families, and kind of from scratch building those relationships. And so that was another thing that was just on our priority for the last six months as well. Yeah. And the Lord is so good. We've met so many amazing people and amazing churches. And uh, maybe we'll do some podcast sometime about community and church. But um, all of that to say, Darren's so right. When you move to a a new location, it's like your calendar gets filled so fast with like meeting new people and putting yourself out there because that's what you kind of need to do to find that connection, to find that community. You have to, what is it? Speed date. Yeah. (laughs) A lot of people. Um, And, you know, our heart is relational and our heart is for people. And so there was no speed in it. We were so slow and probably had people at our house way too late in the evening. (laughs) No, it was was really, really a fruitful summer. Yeah. And so we're glad that it's fall. We're glad to be back doing this. And hopefully it's something that you guys just find encouraging. And so we're going to try to keep them to 20 minutes or so as we go, but... Lots of stories and hopefully lots of encouragement for you guys along the way. Yeah, we are going to return to our regular programming um, very shortly. But we do have a one-off episode that we... It's just so timely because of October 31st around the corner. And so we want to kind of talk about what our family does. We've had lots of questions about it. And we just think this podcast will be a really good format to be able to get the information out and have you guys hear our heart behind it. Um, Because it's really easy to ask someone and give a one-word answer, but... That doesn't really explain how the Lord has been working in our lives and how the Holy Spirit's been convicting us on things. Yeah, and like everything, we are here to share our convictions and share how we walk them out and what the challenges are that we face with them. And so we hope that those things are encouraging to you and help you to think about those things as well. We had a really great conversation with one of our pastors uh, just yesterday where 
we were talking about how your conviction that's rooted in biblical truth can sometimes be what the Spirit uses to convict somebody else, but not that you are doing it in a um, in a way that's intended to make them feel bad or judge them, but sometimes that is just the working of the Lord through the life of one believer in the life of another believer. And so we're here to share our convictions and hopefully help you guys to think critically like we've talked about and to think with a biblical worldview. So we hope it's encouraging to you. Follow us along and we will see you next week.